section. We'll just write the warning there. Uh, we could also put it in the name, so you could put spawner internal spawn anything wave. There we go. Uh, this way, if you copy up this to a new map in half a year, a year, you will remember. You can read your own hints and you can see what you shouldn't call directly and so on. Or if you plan on distributing it to other people, it's very useful to fill in the hints. So now let's call up the spawn unit in wave here. We obviously have to loop through the units in the wave, so we're gonna current wave and we're gonna do a four each. On a temp int. If you notice, I tend to start my local variables with lowercase and global variables with uppercase. This is also a personal preference, but it helps keep things separate. So I know, uh, yeah, well, it's just an organization system. Try to find your own organization system. You can also name it something more useful, like temp unit number. Once again, we're looping through the max units per wave. The reason I do this constant thing is because then I can uh, easily add more units per wave just by modifying these five here and modifying the constant later on if I want to add more units per wave. So I'm going to loop through this five times. We're going to check here. We're just going to check if there is a link in that unit number. So uh, unit type, once again, variables, current wave, and the temp variable, temp unit number, and preset, no game link, and we have to not equal to, if it's not no game link, then call the spawn unit in wave function, and we're going to have to set this one to temp unit number, there we go. So all this function does when it's called is uh, loop through all the units and call up one of each of these spawners. To be able to run spawners at the same time, we have to go into the options action here and click create thread. This means that this action, when this is run from another trigger, the trigger just moves on and this action will run on its own and then just shut down when it's finished. That way it will come in here and it will just start a spawner for the first unit type. It will go start the next spawner, start the next spawner, and start the next spawner. And then the spawners will be run separately and they will each do their work. So you could also set the minimum here to one, but since it's an internal function, we don't need to do it. Now, the last thing we need to do is actually spawn the units. Um, what I usually do is I also set up some more variables here. Spawner, players, spawn location. You could extend this. Actually, I should expand this to player ID for the player so that you can spawn for each separate player. Then we go in here and add the player ID and we just pass it along if this one will just update, might have to just change it to get it to update. There we go. Let's see, what was this? This was the current wave number, unit number, and player ID should be a parameter, player ID. There we go. Then we can spawn waves separately for each player. You might not want this, and you might not need it, but this is how you do it. All right, so now we can start sp actually spawning the units. Um, I'm going to add another constant, spawner, sense, enemy player ID, or creep player ID. This is going to be the owner of the units that we spawn. I'm going to put it to player 15, since that one is the default hostile player. 
And um, then I'm going to add uh, the spawn location. I'm going to set it to be a point. And I'm going to set it to be an array with size 15. So if you look in here, we have up to 15 players here, even though I'm not sure the game will actually support 15 players in multiplayer. But um, oh well, at least we're prepared for it. So in the initialization here, uh, we're going to need a function. It's always useful to keep these, um, to keep making actions for everything. Never access your arrays directly and just make an action when you need it. It might seem like extra work, but it's, it's more of a pain if you end up having um, your variables accessed from all over the place. At least if you have it accessed from one point, if you need to redesign something, you could possibly redesign just this one trick, this one action, instead of going around finding all the places where you set these variables and so on. So spawner set players spawn point parameter one point is going to be a point, obviously. Oh, this player. Okay, not very logically written, but oh well. Set variable. Now we take the um, spawn location. We're obviously going to need player ID here. Spawn location parameters player ID should be equal to parameters spawn point. That's all. And now we can set our player spawn point by going here and set player spawn point. The point is going to be the center of region, so center of region. Region is going to be spawn, and the player, I'm just hard coding this now, you could loop through each player, or you could, or you would have to set up this manually for each player. But I'm just going to set up for player one. Um, all right, so we have a spawn point. Now maybe we're ready to start actually spawning these units. So we're going to do a for each here, for each integer, uh, temp unit is fine, and here we need to take the amount of units, unit amount, and we need the wave number, and unit number, all right, then we should just spawn it, so create unit with default facing, I don't care about the facing, you could add facing as well here if you wanted. Unit type is going to be variable unit type, once again, wave number and unit number. Player is going to be our, not parameter, variable, creep player. Point is going to be spawn location, and we need to take the player ID, and no options. So we created the unit, and that's actually it for creating units. This should be working now. We have our, we set up our waves here, and we can set up as many as we wish just by copying up this, and we could change this to marine, for instance and change the spawn delay, maybe increase it a bit to 0 0.4, drop the amount down to 25, and uh, instead of sell it, we could spawn, what's a fun unit? Colossuses are always fun. All right. Uh, obviously, you need to add some logic to the map now. So since I'm, this is just tower defense logic, you can add whatever logic you want yourself. Move unit. Units enter region. Any unit enters. And I already have my regions. Spawn. 
condition. I want to take owner of unit, triggering unit. 